What I think I'm going to start off with the number 47 is simplifying the numerator a little bit. It's, I don't like the fact that it's written as a product, so I'm going to just distribute that 3 through, and I'm going to get 3 minus 3 sine x over 2 cosine x. Now you'll notice I've only got one problem set up on this page, so that's never a good sign. It's probably going to take a lot of room. So our top function is 3 minus 3 sine x. The derivative of this uh, two-termed expression is going to be the derivative of 3 is 0, and the derivative of negative 3 sine x is going to be negative 3 cosine x. The bottom term is 2 cosine x, and its derivative is going to be negative 2 sine x. It's worth noting that whenever you're taking the derivative of a trig function that begins with the letter c, the answer is going to be negative, or it's going to be the opposite of whatever it started being. Okay, so let's take the derivative. Using the proper notation, we are going to say that y prime is equal to the bottom times the derivative of the top function minus the top function times the derivative of the bottom function. And this is all going to be over the bottom function squared. Okay. So on the upper left, that's a pretty easy product. Negative 6 cosine squared x. Now the upper right, there's a lot of things going on. So what I think I'm going to do is distribute this into this this into this, and I'll have all of that preceded by a negative. So I'm going to have negative 6 sine x plus 6 sine squared x. And again, all of this is going to be over the denominator squared, or 4 cosine squared x. All right, my next move is going to be to distribute the negative through on the top right. So we have negative 6 cosine squared x plus 6 sine x minus 6 sine squared x. And this is all over 4 cosine squared. Now I think the temptation in a problem like this, because it's so long and it seems endless, is to start taking shortcuts. You just want to kind of race through it and be done with it because you've had enough already. But that's probably exactly where any sort of careless errors are going to occur. So just take it slow, one step at a time. You're going to be done before you know it. I'm now going to use the many over one principle, or the mu principle as I call it. So negative 6 over 4 is negative 3 halves. And the cosine squared on the top and bottom are going to cancel. So that's it for the first one. Now when I look at the middle terms, I'm going to have plus 3 halves. And I have a sine x on the top. And what I'm going to do is split cosine squared into cosine x and then 1 over cosine x. That's another way of saying cosine squared x. And then the last term is going to be uh, negative 3 halves, and that's going to be tangent squared, because sine squared over cosine squared is tangent squared. Okay. So let's see if I can squeeze one more step down here. So this is negative 3 halves plus 3 halves. Uh, sine over cosine is tangent. 
1 over cosine is secant. And then we subtract negative 3 halves tan squared. Okay. Now there's a 3 halves in everything, so I think I'm going to take out a 3 halves. Hopefully this will buy me enough space here. So the derivative now is going to be take out the negative 3 halves. And now I'm left with 1 minus tan x secant x. And that's going to be plus tan squared x. Now 1 plus tan squared x is an identity. And it's equal to secant squared x. So now we have secant squared x take away tan x secant x. So now I can take something else out. I could take out a secant x. So I'm left with negative 3 halves secant x. And I'm left with secant x minus tan x. That was absolutely a long problem. And you have to have a lot of patience and wherewithal to keep the process slow so you don't make careless errors. OK, in number 49, the function is y equals negative cosecant x minus sine x. Again, we don't really need the product or the quotient rule here, but the author mixes these in to make sure that you, uh, you know when to use what processes. So. Whenever I take the derivative of a trig function that begins with the letter c, I know it's going to be the opposite in sine of whatever it started out being. So the derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent. So this is actually going to be positive cosecant x cotangent x. And the derivative of sine is cosine. And that looks like that's about it for that one. I guess there's one thing I could consider doing, and that is using, changing everything to sines and cosines and seeing what happens. 1 over sine x plus cosine x over sine x minus cosine x over 1. I was hoping something over here on the left would cancel, but that's not the case. Now here, I could take out a cosine, because it's in both. If I take out a cosine, I'm left with 1 over sine squared minus 1, which is going to be cosine times cosecant squared minus 1. And I'm remembering this looks like a po possibly an identity. Let's see. 1 plus cotangent squared theta is equal to cosecant squared theta. So that means is if I have, if I move that 1 over, like this, I do in fact have an identity. So that means I could express this answer as cosine x cotangent squared x. Number 51 is a classic product rule. So our first function is x squared. Its derivative is 2x. The second function is tan x, and its derivative is secant squared x. So using the product rule, the derivative is going to be the first times the derivative of the second plus the second 
times the derivative of the first. Cleaning this up, I end up getting x squared, secant squared x, plus 2x tan x. I could take out an x. And that would be leaving me with x secant squared x plus 2 tan x. Can't take anything more out, so I think I'm going to stop there.